Welcome to Something Special Designs by Tina Williams, where I create French country, cottage, shabby, and farmhouse decor with mainly thrifted items. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you'll know when I upload future videos. Hi, this is Tina. Hope everybody's doing well today. I have this little riser that I just recently thrifted. And I am going to be uh, making that into kind of a uh, uh, Easter uh, little decoration. But I think really you could use it all the time. I'm going to be using some Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint, coffee bean. And I'm going to be covering this with just one coat. Um, this is going to be our bottom coat. We're going to actually be adding other uh, colors to the top. But anyway, I'm going to be doing the entire uh, tray top of the tray itself, the sides, uh, the back, and also the pedestal portion of this riser. And I'm going to make sure it's a, you know, a good coat. It covers everything, um, but yet, um, you know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because um, it is going to be our, just our top, our bottom coat for this whole thing. And after I do that, I'm going to let this dry for about an hour um, to make sure it's completely dry before we move on to the next step and in making sure I get the other sides, the bottom and everything, because we're going to do the same thing to the whole uh, piece. So we need it all to be painted and ready to go in just um, an hour. Okay, so now what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be adding some uh, crackle paint to this. And this is just the folk art crackle. I really like it. It works really well. And I'm going to put this all over and I'm going to put it on a generous amount because I want this to be very um, distressed. Uh, so if you don't want it as distressed and you don't want it as much crackle, then you would not add as much as I'm adding. So I'm basically loading up my brush and I'm trying not to go back and forth. Uh, I'm trying to just uh, go like in one direction because when you go back and forth, it tends to uh, take chunks out rather than just do crackle. So, uh, you know, you, you will have to do some of that, but it, you try not to do too much of it. So now what I'm doing is I'm making sure I'm doing the sides. And I'm going to be doing this entire piece. Um, we painted the whole thing in coffee bean. And I'm going to be doing um, the bottom of it. And I'm going to be doing the pedestal and the whole entire thing and make sure that um, I coat it all really well. Um, you could uh, skip this step and just paint it a color and not do it, but I'm trying to make the entire piece look really distressed and to be cohesive. So I am gonna put it all over, even on the pedestal. Um, the way that I do the pedestal is I just kind of hold it up um, and then go all the way around it. So now I moved on to my little um, container that I have. It's a little uh, floral container and I'm going to be using a Dixie Pell drop cloth. And I'm going to be doing two coats on this because I want full coverage. But I'm just doing the outside. I'm not doing the inside. Um, where I just leave, I'm leaving the inside uh, just the way it is in case someone wants to put flowers in it or something. Um, and or water or any type of um, uh, contain anything like that just so that it, it's usable for that so anyway I'm going to cover the whole thing and um, go around and do one coat I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll move on to the next coat and um, and we'll be doing something to the handles and the um, bottom rim and top rim but um, right now I'm not worried if I go over them with the white paint because we'll just paint over it later. So that's not a big deal. So now what I'm doing is I have some, um, just some black chalk paint and this is just chalk paint that I got from the dollar store. And I am gonna go over the, um, the uh, little handles and the top rim and the bottom rim with uh, just this black chalk paint because I'm trying to give this an enamelware kind of look to it. 
So, and I'm not worried about being perfect on this. I'm just trying to uh, get, you know, the majority of it on the, um, so you can see it on front. I'm not going uh, close to the inside with it. Um, I'm getting the inside of the handles, but I'm not going down uh, over where the white paint is too too far because you won't really even notice that I haven't done that. But So anyway, I go all the way around the handles and I do a pretty good job on that. And then I'm going to move on to going to the bottom rim. And um, if you mess up, don't worry about it, guys. Uh, like I did here, I went a little too far. You just take your white paint and go and correct it. And now I'm going to do the top rim. And this is really not that hard if you don't try and go all the way down um, to where and meet where the white is. You just go, you just follow the rim with your brush and load up your brush really well. And it will go all the way around pretty easy. It's not that hard. Um, after I do all this, I'm going to let it dry for a little bit. And then we will move on to the next step. So here what I'm doing is I have my clear coat um, and I am going to just take that and I took some um, vintage photo uh, by Ranger um, and I just put a couple drops in it. It was clear and I was just using uh, Dixie Bell clear coat flat and all I'm doing is I am I'm using that tinted top coat and I have it in a separate little container. And I'm going over and I'm using it like glaze. I'm just taking it and I am covering my entire container with it. Um, I'm going to be wiping some of this back. But the reason I do that is, first of all, I want to seal it. But I also, at the same time that I'm sealing it, I want to add a little bit of a patina to it to make it look, not look so new. Um, I'm wanting this to look a little bit distressed and old. And um, I could do that with like a glaze or I could do it with a brown wax. But I really feel like doing this is, um, does two things. It gives it, it, um, it kind of seals it for our next step. And it also um, gives it just a little tint of um, color and making it vintage. Now I do also um, go over the handles and, and the black rim. And um, I'm trying really not to uh, do the uh, handles and the rims with the uh, white because it's tinny, it's kind of smudging a little bit. But anyway, I do take a baby wipe and wipe back some of this um, anywhere I think there's too much and um, just kind of just like you would a glaze. And I'm doing that pretty much over the whole thing. And this is what we end up with. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking my um, archival ink. It's a permanent black ink. Any permanent black ink will work. And I am using um, my stamp. Uh, this is an IOD stamp. And it comes four to a pack. I will list it uh, later. I can't think of the name of it. But in any case, um, on this stamp, what you do is it has like a... a uh, portion of it that makes it look like chipped um, and I love it I have I lost one of them I don't know what happened to him but they're all there's four of them that are similar and I'm just loading it up with ink and going around my container um, just to give it a chipped look and now what I'm doing is I have the other stamp that's in the, the bunch and it's a crackle stamp and I'm taking that and I'm randomly going around my container to give it just a little bit more distress, a uh, little bit of crackle here and there, uh, not a whole lot, but just some. And um, this way, it is going to give my container a little older distressed look. And then I'm going to take a baby wipe and I'm going to go over all of those spots that I just did and I'm going to lighten them up a little bit so they're not as fresh and as dark. Some of them will be, some of them won't be, but I go over the crackle, I go over the chippy. And um, what that does is it just kind of lightens it up and makes it look more natural, I think. So I do that all over and um, that just kind of lightens up the whole thing. So now what I'm doing is I am going through my uh, transfers. And this is a Prima uh, uh, transfer that I got off of Amazon. And it has all these cute little bunnies. 
um, and I'm looking through them to try and figure out which one I want to put on there and also they have a lot of other decorative elements they've got um, greenery and things like that but I'm going to take this little swirly thing that they have on top and then I'm going to cut out one of the little bunnies and it's this little gray and pink bunny there and kind of put that on the middle and I'm going to put that on top um, and then I realized I've got a big space on the bottom. So then I went ahead and took one of my IOD transfers. Um, and then I decided to put that in there to take up some space. And that one, um, comes from part of the, um, traditional pots transfer. So the redesign transfer, you can buy it on Amazon or you can pay it on Etsy. Um, I bought it on Amazon and it is um, called Cottontail and it does have all kinds of cute little bunnies and stuff on it so um, that's a fun one to get so I am going to go ahead and put my transfers on I put the top one and the bunny on and then I wait to do the other one and I'm going to go over it with my stick and um, my transfer stick that I got for my IOD transfers it works really well and I'm gonna go and do the top and then the one thing I have to say I had a little bit of trouble with this one and that is because I didn't wait long enough for my um, my clear coat to dry you really want to make sure that your clear coat is dry before you um, before you try and put a transfer on or it'll pull up the paint and started to pull up the paint but I I worked with it but um, you really want to make sure it's totally dry before you do that that's just my advice just it's better to take the time or dry it with your heat gun or do something so now I'm doing the bottom and um, I don't have as much problems with that because by that time my uh, clear coats a little bit more dry and um, it's not that the Prima transfer that there's anything wrong with it. I just really did not allow enough time for uh, my clear coat to dry. And you definitely want to uh, have a clear coat on there before you put your transfer uh, or uh, definitely not wax. If you put wax down, you will have, it's almost impossible to get your transfer to stick. Um, you really want to just do some sort of a uh, clear coat. And anyway, so I just rub and then if I see something that's not down all the way, I go put it, put my transfer back down and then I keep rubbing until it comes off. And then I have everything all done. So then I take my top uh, portion of uh, the transfer, the transfer sheet, and I burnish the entire thing, all three transfers, and get them stuck down really well. And now I'm taking my polyclear polyclear I can never say that word polyacrylic um, clear coat and this is a gloss coat because I want this to be glossy because I want this to look like enamel and enamel would have a shine to it so um, I'm going over this with the uh, gloss to make sure that I get a nice uh, shiny coat on there and I only do one because that's really all it takes and plus I'm also um, sealing in my transfer, which you should do for longevity uh, to keep that transfer on there good. Um, you should always uh, seal it. You can seal it with wax if you want to. Uh, I'm using this clear coat for, you know, it's uh, for aesthetic reasons to give us the enamel look. Um, and um, this is very, very uh, glossy if you, if you need something. Occasionally you need, you know, to have a gloss. Most of the time I use uh, a flat coat but um, when I'm trying to do something like this or make something look like glass or something then um, I will use a, uh, a gloss finish to it so then that when that's uh, done I'll let that dry and then we're going to move back on to our riser and um, I know it doesn't look like it but the um, crackle is dry it just has a very shiny look to it um, when it's dry and um, it did puddle a little bit more around the edges because I guess it dripped down from the sides, but that's okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding Dixie Belle drop cloth to the top of it. Um, I love this color. It's, it really, it is the color of drop cloth. 
because I've had to paint things on uh, drop cloth and it matches perfectly. Um, so I'm going to go over it and I'm trying not to go back and forth with my brush. I'm trying to just load up my brush and go in one direction because when you go back and forth, it lifts big chunks of your uh, paint off. So if you want that look, um, you know what? There's 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 a time and place for that. I've done that. And I, I think it looks really good. Um, but for this, we just want it to be very, very chippy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go in just one direction. And you can see already it's starting to crack. It's not even dry yet. So um, I did put a lot of crackle on there. So it's going to be very, very distressed. Um, and so that's if you don't want it as distressed then you just put it on a lot lighter it's just really that simple um, i'm going to be doing the entire tray uh, not not tray but riser and i'm going to be doing the bottom and i'll be doing the pedestal as well okay so now i'm going to do the bottom part of it and i'm going to do the same thing um, I made sure the top was dry enough around the rim so that I could turn it over. And now I'm going to go through and I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom um, because I want this all to be cohesive and have the same look. You could, if you wanted to, um, maybe just paint this portion in drop cloth and not do any kind of crackle to it. Um, but, you know, I just wanted the whole thing to kind of go together. So that's why I did it. And I'm doing it the same way. I'm going in long strokes. And you can already see it uh, crack up, doing the crackle as I'm doing this. So, um, and it only takes one coat of the drop cloth to do the whole thing. So that is how uh, I'm going to do it. And getting the pedestal, I just kind of wait for it to dry enough to get to that portion of it. And then I go in and I make sure I get any spots that I missed. And that's pretty much all I do. And you can already see how much it's crackled. It's not even all the way dry. So um, I love it. I love how this looks when it does that. So now what I'm doing after it's dry is I am taking my um, clear coat uh, flat Dixie Belle that I have put a little bit of Distress Vintage Photo in. And I am, I am sealing this crackle with it. And I'm going to go over the entire thing with this. And of course, I'm going to wipe some of it back. Again, I'm using it like a glaze. And it's also, um, you know, it's also going to uh, uh, seal this in as well. So I'm, I'm doing that all over. I'll do it on the bottom. I'll do it on the uh, uh, pedestal portion of it. And I will do it all, you know, pretty liberally. I put a lot on, so um, I think I wiped back a little bit too much on this and came back in and did it again um, just to make sure, you know, that I got enough on there. And um, I do do that sometimes. I do wipe off too much. So now I'm going back in and trying to get the right amount on there without wiping too much off. And, you know, it's just a process. You just kind of have to get it like you want it. Um, and I just treat this like a glaze. And it works like a glaze, really. So, anyway, that's what I do. And I do that to the entire piece. And then I have to let that dry before we can move on to the next step. Okay, so now what I have is I have an IOD stamp out. And I think this is the Farm Animals by IOD. And we're going to be using the rabbit stamp. And um, I went ahead and prepped it by sanding it first. And now I'm putting my uh, black archival ink on it. And I've never used this stamp. And I usually always um, stamp one time on a piece of paper um, just to, for the first time, um, just to kind of prep it a little bit. And so I'm going to do that, and then now I'm going to go in and get my stamp ready to go in there and do that. Um, and just make sure I have plenty of ink. And when I do this, I always make sure I wipe off uh, my uh, backing sheet that I have so that I don't transfer any extra ink across. And then I position it where I want it in the middle. 
And then I'm gonna put one hand down and I'm just gonna kind of walk my fingers across the whole stamp and making sure I always have one hand down, um, not smudging it. Um, and just make sure you get it all down. And I did ink up my stamp quite a bit because um, this surface is very uneven because of all the crackle. So um, it's going to take a little bit more ink and a little bit more pressure than it would if you were just stamping on a completely flat surface or if you were stamping on um, just paper. So um, anyway, I make sure that I pull it straight up and there is my image and I think it turned out really good. So now I am going to be using another stamp from IOD and that is the Queen Bee stamp. And I'm just going to be using a couple pieces of it. Um, it's just the, uh, the Laurel, I guess it's the Laurel uh, branches. So I'm going to be using a couple of those and inking those up and get the, getting them on. And I'm sorry I'm off camera on this. I don't know what, I think I pulled it toward me so that I could um, see what I was doing. <laughs> But, I mean, I can see what I'm doing, but you can't see what I'm doing. But anyway, I'm just putting my stamp down and giving it some pressure, just like I did with the rabbit. And um, I'm going to go ahead and um, get that down. And it, it turns out pretty good. So, like I said, on this uneven surface, you do have to add a little bit more ink and a little bit more pressure. So, you'll get to see me do the top one. So, there it is, and it looks pretty good. So now we're going to be doing the bottom one and doing the same thing. Wiping off my stamp with a um, with a baby wipe that I used. And I'm going to go ahead and do the top one. And ink it up really, really good just because of the surface being so um, uneven. So here I am going to go ahead and position it and I picked this because to me it continued the circle and it added to the rabbit. I thought it needed something else but I didn't want it to be like um, you know too too, too busy um, because of this kind of um, very distressed look. I thought this would work best. And that one turned out just a tiny bit blurry. I think I moved it a little and didn't move it straight up when I uh, took it off, but it doesn't look bad. And I do take a wipe and go back in and I will do this to all three of them. Um, all You know, the rabbit and the other uh, laurel down below. And I do this to give it a more distressed look. Um, you could definitely go in there with sandpaper if you wanted to, but usually a wipe will do that. And now what I'm doing is I'm going over my entire um, tray with a Dixie Belle clear coat um, flat, and I'm doing uh, giving it a generous coat. Now I waited for my stamp to dry um, before I did this. You do want to give it, you know, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes for it to be completely dry. But um, I have never had problems with my ink smearing on a permanent ink. So now what we're doing, guys, is I have four pieces of drop cloth that I just cut into squares. And we're going to be making pillows. And we're going to be stenciling on two of these pieces. And this is just plain old drop cloth that you buy, um, you know, from a hardware store. And I just cut four pieces that will fit the stencil that we can make a pillow. And this is a screen print stencil, it's, which I have come to love. I love screen print stencils. I bought this off of Amazon. If I can find the link, I'll put it below. Um, anyway, I always take my stencils down, although I have to say on these stencils, um, the screen print ones that are sticky, you really don't have to do that. But the big reason I do it is if you notice how close that writing is to the edge. Um, when I go over it with my uh, chalk paste, which I'm using redesign uh, chalk paste in Iron Gate, which I love because it's 
it just works really a paste works better on this than regular chalk paint um because you don't want any bleed through and so i like the color of this and um i like how um thick it is it's not really a black and the tool that i'm using is this is just a hairdresser little um uh, tool that they use to put your um, hair dye on and it, it is, has silicone on the bottom and this thing works fantastic uh, to for applying this paste um, it it just it works really really well um, so anyway I mean you could use a scraper um, whatever but I have these and um, you can buy like three of them for five bucks or something on Amazon if you look um, and I'm just going across um, all of the lettering everything and see how hot that's why I have the tape around it not to keep it in place because these are sticky but I do it because I don't want to go over um, I don't want to hit you know go over the stencil because they have they, you know it's pretty filled up so after I do the whole thing, I pull it off and always wash your stencil immediately after, guys. So it turns out fantastic. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, these things have such detail and they always work so well. So now I'm going to be doing just a regular um, stencil uh, that I got off of Amazon. And I always tape those down for sure. Um, and for two reasons, I don't want to go over my stencil and get it onto the rest of the drop cloth where it doesn't belong, and also to keep it in place. Um, and I just thought I, I had these two different kinds, so I thought I would show you. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same paste, and I'm going to be using a stencil brush um, for this. And all I do is I um, put, I offload some of the. Um, the paste on there and I am making this a little bit thinner um, to go on the stencil um, because it's a different kind of application with the stipple stippling effect and I will tell you whenever you're doing like material like drop cloth that's very absorbent like this um, it does take more than if you're doing on paper or if you're doing like a wood sign or something um, it does take more of the chalk paint um, but, and that's part of the reason I'm watering, putting a little water in there. You got to be careful though, because if it's too watery, it'll smudge a little bit. And I think, um, on this one, it does smudge a tiny bit on top, but, um, it does, I, I get it, um, to where it looks pretty good. So, but you do have to add a lot more chalk paint, um, on material than you would, um, than you would uh, if you were just doing, you know, wood or um, just paper. So you have to just add a little bit more. And I do the same thing um, to all the letters and just, I'm kind of holding down my stencil because this stencil is not completely flat. When it was shipped to me, um, it actually was bent. So it doesn't lie completely flat. One way you could um, help yourself with that is put like a spray on adhesive um, so then it would stick all the way down but um, I did not do that so I'm holding it down with my fingers and going over all the letters and I'm going to be doing that and the thing about it is is I'm um, offloading my brush and making sure that I don't have too much paint on there that's the most important thing and I will go through and do all the letters and the entire stencil um, just stippling. And I, I usually only do uh, one coat. I don't do two. And then I'll go ahead and just tear it off. Um, go straight up so it doesn't smear. And I think this turned out pretty good. So um, we are going to be sewing this together later and making our pillows out of these two. And... Um, this should be fun. So now we're going to do our last project. And I have this thrifted front frame that I got for five bucks at a yard sale. 
And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the backing out because we're going to use the backing um, to put our picture on. And this frame comes with a mat that's kind of a foam mat. Um, it's really pretty, but it would make uh, it be too small for our what we're doing. So I'm, we're not going to use that in the frame. So now what I just showed you is I am using some chalk paint that I have. And it is um, folk art home decor chalk paint. And it's called, um, um, let's see, uh, Parisian Gray. And I love this color, guys. I really, really do. Um, it's kind of a, almost a beigey gray. And I really, really love it. Um, so anyway, I am going to be painting this frame. And I am only going to do one coat. And I don't care if it has 100% good coverage or not. Um, you'll see that I skip parts on there. And it looks like it's brown in there. Um, this has already been like distressed with the uh, silver coating that it had. So it kind of has this brown look to it. So I'm not too worried if I um, don't get every little nook and cranny of this. Um, so I'm just going to be doing one coat. Um, also, the color that was on there was already silver, but it was a metallic silver. And um, we're going for more of a dulled kind of look with this. And we cover the whole thing um, and uh, make sure we get the sides. And I do the top. And I, I'm sorry I can't get it all in the frame, but anyway, you get the idea. And again, I, I am not worried about all those little um, spots that have the brown in it because I'm going to be coming back and distressing this anyway. So I do make sure I get all the sides and everything else. Um, but And I cover the majority of it. But after we do this, um, we're going to let this dry so we can move on to our next um, portion of this. So um, now that we're letting our uh, frame dry, this is a, um, it's actually a canvas that I bought off of Timu. And um, it is a little bit big for this frame, but not too big. We're just going to have to take a little of it off. And I'm trying to figure out what portion I want to cut off. And I've decided I'd rather cut it off from the top than the bottom because um, it would take part of the rabbit. And now what I'm doing, guys, is I am adding a double-sided uh, tape to that back portion of the frame that we took out. And um, I'm just basically putting double-sided tape all the way across um, so that this canvas can sit on this backing. And um, that's just a little tip if you get some of these canvases. Um, they're kind of thick and you want them to stick um, to something. Um, you don't want to just put them in there and lay them in there because they won't, I don't know, they won't look like they're, you know, solidly in there. And if you don't want to use glue, which sometimes can look kind of patchy, you can see kind of the glue or the bumps. Or if you use hot glue, I've tried hot glue and then you see the bumps of the hot glue. Sometimes the glue will bleed through or you can see the bumps of the glue. Uh, Double-sided tape works really well for this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and look at my, uh, I took one of the uh, tops of the uh, tape off because I'm going to start on one corner and then I'm going to go ahead and go across and I know where I'm going to put it. And the reason I do that is if you take all of the backing off and try and do it, it becomes really easy for it to get kind of messed up and all stuck together and it's better to just have it like starting in one little side and have it where you want it in the position that you want it before you take the rest of your tape off. So then I'm taking the rest of my tape off because um, I've already got a position and it, it'll go on really easy um, just because you know it is a canvas. It's really canvas. It's made out of canvas. And so then all I'm going to do now is I'm going to be cutting around it with my scissors um, and um, just using my backing uh, to let me know how far I have to cut this and um, so I can place it inside my frame. 
and it's in just an easy way to do this and also um you can pull it off of the backing later if you want to um you know add something else in there and use the frame for something else so anyway um you could also add um like a poster board and just take like some poster board and cut it to the size of your backing and then add this uh then add this to uh, the, the canvas to the poster board and then you wouldn't put, be putting it on your actual backing if you don't want to do that and just go through the same steps. So now I'm going to put that aside and what we're going to be doing here is I am taking my Dixie Belle uh, clear coat and I pour some in the um, top. I don't like to contaminate my whole thing so I usually just pour what I need into the top and then use it from there and then kind of wipe it out and um, put the top back on because rather than keep dipping in and out um, because you will transfer some paint in there anyway so I'm just using a fan brush I like to use a fan brush when I put a top coat on um, it tends to keep you from adding too much and it spreads the paint out better and anyway um or or the top coat out better and I'm going to be covering the entire thing with a clear coat, um, sides, everything, because we are going to go in and be putting a brown wax on this later. And I want to be able to wipe it back as much as I need to. And if I don't put some sort of barrier on there, um, some sort of top coat or um, a clear wax or something, yeah. It, if you don't do that, then you're not able to pull back. Um, the chalk paint will absorb um, the, uh, the stain or the wax and you won't be able to get it off. So you always want to have some sort of um, barrier between you and the um, dark wax if you're going to put it on there. At least that's been my experience. So. Anyway, that's how I do it, and I'm going to go ahead and put that on there, and I'm going to let that dry, and then we will move on to something else um, to get done with all of our little projects. So now I've got my um, pillows, and what you do is I have my back side and my top side, and you put those together, and you just basically sew around it. Um, in a square or you could glue it you do not have to sew I just sewed around it and I'm taking off the bulk of my um, uh, any extra material that I have because we're going to be turning this inside out and you don't want it to be overly bulky so you just basically sew around it and then um, I clip the side the little corners so that it won't be too bulky and I leave about a four inch gap so that I can stick my hand in there and turn this inside out because, um, you know, this is obviously the wrong way. So I do that. And then if I have to, I'll get like a little pencil and put the eraser in there or, you know, a ruler or something and push the sides out. And if you see that top part that's not done, that's raw, that is where we are going to stuff it and put all of our stuff in it. So I do the same thing um, with the other one and you'll see that I have both of them done. And then the next step is to fill it all up. Um, I do, if you can see there, I take my little pencil eraser because you don't want anything too sharp to go through there. And I just kind of go and poke, uh, put, poke that in the corners and get my corners out better. Um, at least that's what it works for me. So now I'm just using my filler and I have this um, pillow filler that I got from these pillows that I bought that you can make your pillow, you know, pull out whatever you want. And I have a bunch of this stuffing and I am just going to be stuffing both of these pillows with it. Um, you can use any kind of um, filler that you have. If you have an old pillow, um, any type, anything, any batting that you have um i have this is what i have around so i'm going to use it um you could also do this with a pillow form uh you would just have to measure the size of your drop cloth and make sure that you're making it the right size and you would also have to leave an opening big enough that you could fit your form in it 
So now that what I'm done doing that, I am going to kind of uh, fold in my edges. This is on my four inch uh, gap that I have there. I'm gonna fold that together and I'm gonna take hot glue and I'm just gonna put a bead of hot glue in there and um, the hot glue will hold this. If you don't wanna do that, you could use fabric tack or something like that um, to hold it. But for the purposes um, that I'm using these pillows, I think it'll hold just fine. And so that is really how you make the pillows. It's super easy. It's just a, a square or a rectangle. And I think they turned out really, really cute. Uh, I'm going to do my other one exactly the same way. Uh, no difference. And I uh, have to get all of that stuff off. i got to get it all off the floor, too. And so you basically just tuck it in. Um, the biggest part is getting all the little bits and pieces off, you know, off of it so you can put your glue in there. And then I just take my hot glue and put my hot glue in there and that will go ahead and close it up as well. And it's a, you know, pretty easy thing to do. You could do the entire pillow with hot glue, guys. I've done it before. Um, I recommend using Gorilla Glue hot glue. That's what I use. Um, it really, really works well. But, you know, I have a sewing machine, so I sewed it. And, but I, and again, you could sew this portion right here that I'm hot gluing. You do not, you could hand stitch it shut if you do not want to use glue. Um, so anyway, I'm hot gluing it and I'm holding it together. Um, just enough for the hot glue to stick. And that finishes off our last pillow. And that's all we have uh, left to do with both of them. I think they turned out really cute. So anyway, now what we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next uh, portion of this and that is um, putting our dark wax on. I have the Dixie Belle brown, brown wax and um, what I'm going to do with that it is um, just take my wax brush and I am going to heavily put on the brown wax and it really I know it looks like I'm ruining this. It always looks like that. I remember the first time I did it I was like oh my gosh what did I do? And that's why I wasn't too concerned about uh, perfect coverage on this because the brown in here looks very similar to the brown that they already had it distressed at. So it wasn't, wasn't a big deal if I had, you know, a few parts of it that already looked distressed. So I'm going to go over the whole thing and um, just uh, cover it pretty well, uh, I, getting in all the little nooks and crannies and things like that. And I, I have um, two different brushes out because one kind of gets in the corners really well and the other one kind of um, gets all over the piece well. I just use them both usually when I'm putting wax on. You definitely don't have to have these for sure, but I have them and that's what I use them for. Um, I bought these off of Amazon. They're not expensive brushes. Now I'm just taking a wet wipe and I'm going to be wiping off probably 80% of this and leaving um, not a whole lot back in there. I still want this to look uh, gray when it's done. And what this will do too is it'll kind of change the color of the gray a little bit and make it a little bit warmer. Um, and I really like, I like how that looks. I really like this gray. It's just a, it's a, a great gray. Um, you know, that it just tends to work well with warm uh, colors and it works well um, with cool colors. So it's, a, it's like a, a really good in-between gray. So anyway, I'm gonna go through, and the one tip too I also have is just to make sure you don't try and use the same wipe because uh, once it gets filled up with wax, all you're doing is moving wax around. You're not taking anything off. So make sure that you occasionally start with a new wipe and go in there and, and um, get in all the little nooks and crannies. And if you have to, um, I sometimes take a little brush and pull some of the wax out of spots if there's too much in there that I can't get to. And I just do that all the way through. And when it's dry, um, I start working on getting my uh, my 
picture back in there and um, I just go ahead and place the picture in with the glass and all I do is I'm having to take the backing or the uh, the foam piece that was on the inside I'm having to put it on the outside because there's a gap in there that it was it was filling and so I'm having to put it on the back of my uh, frame in order to fill that gap if you were um, doing this for resale or something like that I would definitely just uh, cut out a piece of foam core or something and put it in there so there it is guys there's everything it's all done I hope you like it I love all of these pieces I think they work really well together um, they're gonna work great in my decor and uh, I will be doing some more Easter things um, probably two or three more and um, kind of overlapping into spring so um, I hope you enjoyed this and if you did please give me a thumbs up uh, subscribe uh, you know comment and let me know that you like this so that I do future videos and I guess I'll see you guys again soon take care